Hello, freak bitches. It was after the fight. I'm in the back and I see Amir Khan, Terrence Crawford, and uh, Andre Berto. And so I go to talk to them, and they were all, like, super complimentary of Conor McGregor. Like, dude, he can box, man. I'm like, right? Like, what do you think? You're just going to go and look like an asshole, like Bart Simpson, right. and fly across <laughs> like this? Like, what do you expect to happen? Like, we just didn't expect him to get any rounds. We thought he was just going to be outclassed. I'm like, nah, man. He looked He, he has looked tremendous good. belief in himself. <clears throat> and he had a weird style, that, that strange style of off-speed punches, extending his arms fully, and then pop them in there. And Paul, in the back, even Paulie goes, I got to be honest, I was kind of glad to see that, because when I went against him, like the first four or five rounds, I couldn't land shit, because that style, like it takes forever just to get used to it. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to do. He's like, so I just thought maybe I was having an off day, but once <laughs> I see that, and I see Floyd do the kind of the same thing, you know? Granted, Floyd fought a different style, but I don't give a shit. Yeah, that style's legit. Hell it's yeah. legit. You know, I mean, th that's just too big a leap. That's all it is. For Conor to go and his first professional fight, fight arguably the greatest fighter of all time. It's like he's 100% in the mix now at he's 50 and 0. At 50 and 0, it's 100% in the mix that he's the greatest fighter of all time. You think about defensively, no one's even close. No one's been hit as little as him. And, and Conor hit him. Yeah, he's beat everybody. And obviously he fought Conor a different way than he fought everybody else. That's a fact. But... Connor hit him more than any fighter that ever you've Here's he the ever other fought. thing. Here's kudos to Connor and Floyd, but especially Connor. When's the last time you saw an exciting Floyd Mayweather fight? True. Connor went at him. Yeah, that's when when Connor the after the fight, I made him I turned him into a Mexican. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Like Did you say that? Like Yeah. He, you didn't Con hear that? No. Connor yeah. brought I missed a lot of that. Connor brought the fight out of him oh, for yeah. the first time since I don't know yeah. who. You it's know what I'm saying? It's been, you can say, well, last finish was Victor Ortiz. That was shit. That was yeah, kind was of a shit. cheap shot. Yeah. He didn't really didn't bring it to him, but this Connor was, brought it out of him, man. This was legit. It was and, cool, man. And when I watch it the second time, knowing the result, then you really appreciate what Floyd's doing. Because although Connor did catch him, he <clears> definitely <throat> caught him with a hard uppercut in the first round. Best like that shot, was, yeah. That was interesting because that was like, oh, shit. Like, you got to realize, mind your P's and Q's. This guy's legit. But. Uh, Connor never. I mean, even though he clipped him with that shot, it never really hurt him except no. that one shot to the body. Which I was surprised. I gotta be yeah. honest. In, in, in my prediction, I thought Connor was gonna do well like he did in the first rounds. I called that. I thought he was gonna run four to five rounds, and then I thought he would. I thought maybe that uppercut would wobble him, mm. and that would be enough to win Connor kind of the spectacle. But just it, you know, Floyd's chin and. You know, just the boxing power is a little different, man. It definitely is different. And I don't think Connor's loading up either. You know, I don't think Connor is uh, really like digging in on these shots because I think he was probably concerned about his endurance. You got to realize also, this fight was relatively short notice. So short notice that I had already booked the DC improv in advance and it was sold out by the time they announced the fight. Correct. So, or not the DC improv, the uh, Warner Theater in DC. So, if you think about that, that's fucking months in advance. Three months. They, they, this fight was announced three months ago. That's nothing. That's nothing for this That's magnitude nothing. of a fight. <laughs> Most of the time, a fight like this is six, seven months out. Oh, easy. my God. Easy. Maybe more. When did they announce Canelo Triple D? It's been a long time. It's been a while. I think between the time they announced it and when the fight starts, I got to feel like it's five months at least. At least five. Which is normal. I would assume. But, but at least they but they also, boxing was smart because they set it up, right? So they had Canelo versus uh, Chavez Jr. That right. was a joke. But that was literally just a setup to get him to, trip, to yeah. Triple G. And they both knew it. Yeah. So you're looking at basically a year in the making. And yeah. before that, what, two years in the making? And here's more <coughs> importantly, during that entire time, they're both boxing. So Correct. Connor's not. I mean, he's not really sure if he's going to actually have this boxing match with Floyd Mayweather, right? So he knocks out Eddie Alvarez, and then somehow or another the rumblings get started. But that's just not enough time. Well, did you did you hear months to prepare for Floyd? I agree, especially in that arena, the best of all time in that different arena. Yeah. But Floyd uh, goes... Listen, I tried making this fight before this, and the UFC turned it down. And he goes, all right, we'll see what happens. And then he goes, and I came back and was like, yo, this is how much money we could make. And he goes, and then they were like, all right, let's do it. He goes, but I tried making this fight a while ago, but even before this. Yeah, I remember the discussions. But to be, uh, to be that close, like when they actually announced it, okay, this is actually happening. Crazy. It's crazy to have it so quickly. Especially this magnitude of a fight. Yeah, it's nuts. So if something like that, <clears throat> if you gave Connor like six months, maybe he could get in better shape where he could survive. He's always going to fit. He's, he's never going to be against a guy like Mayweather who's so efficient 
and his movement is so crisp. And this is how I was describing it to a friend of mine. I was like, Does your friend have a boxing or martial arts background? No. Any facet? He was trying to figure out like why he would get so tired. Gotcha. And I said, I go, Okay, <clears throat> when you tie your shoe, you tie your shoe, you don't even think about it. You just go, whoosh, Right? Now, but if you have to think about tying your shoes, it takes more energy. It's going to wear you And out. you have to think, and then you're, you're tense. I go, Floyd's just tying the shoes. He's like, reacting. Every, yeah, he's, he's just doing so, his thing. he's so good. He's been doing it so long that he's just got it ingrained in his movements. Connor has to think way more than Floyd does. And Floyd is constantly pressuring him, so Connor's backing up all the time, which wears you out. And also the the volume of punches, mm -hmm. you know, he set a really high pace. He thought I think more. He thought he was gonna be able to stop him, maybe a little more, and stop him from coming forward. He wasn't prepared when you know when Floyd put his head in his chest mm -hmm. and did work. Uh, the ref didn't allow him to get his rest in the clinch. But listen, at, at the end of the day, I'm all about the glitch in the matrix, man. I think Connor's a glitch. It was so much fun that he even pulled this off. It's awesome. He didn't dishonor the sport. I thought he did really well. Um, the only the, I told Connor, I said, I'm proud of you, man. I th what he did, what, yeah. win or lose, man, this is nuts. His belief in himself is incredible. But even that is not enough if you fight a better boxer and your body gets tired. So that's what we saw in that fight. In the beginning of the fight, if he could have maintained somehow or another, if he was in good enough shape, that he could maintain the pace that he had the and the movement that he had in the first three rounds for the entire 12. Got a fight. It's a well, a way different fight. Different because fight. he's dangerous, he's quick, he's moving away. He has a huge endurance problem. And this is like something that comes back to for boxing. Obviously, you don't this think he has an endurance factor. problem in UFC as well? He may because if you look at he his did, attributes, for, certainly Joe, in the Nate Diaz fight, but that, the, the only one that fight, went five rounds, the like first if, fight, yeah. But if you look at his attributes, I'd say endurance is, you know, and everyone knows I'm a Conor Dick rider. But if you go on, you know, his strengths, I'd, I'd say it's at the bottom yes. as far as his strengths. I agree. It's not bad where it's like you know, no, it's not good. It's not good. Look, he, uh, here's the best endurance in the sport, Mighty Mouse. For sure. Well, he's, he doesn't count. He's true, out. True. You're 125 but, pounds. You're out. Cain Velasquez counts. Cain Velasquez did count. Cain Velasquez at, counts. At, at, the, at the height of his career. You know who else has phenomenal cardio? Neil Magny. Neil Magny's Neil phenomenal. Neil Magny the gazelle has some phenomenal cardio. Phenomenal cardio. cardio. <laughs>